So, should Christians only read the King James Bible? What's up with this King James only controversy? Hey gang, it's Ruby. Welcome back to my channel. So, there's a division within Christians regarding what translation of the Bible is the best translation. And a lot of it is fairly academic in terms of any disagreement, but there's this one group of Christians which they would call themselves KJV purists or KJV only, and they are extremely passionate about defending the King James Version and claim it is the only version to the point where the King James Version has been considered the authorized version. And so, first of all, let's just kind of start, what is the King James Version, right? Well, the King James Version was a project that was done under King James I where he commissioned a group of scholars to be able to translate the Bible into, at the time, modern day English. And it took seven years to complete, was 54 highly respected scholars of their age. And it was an incredibly great endeavor because prior to that, the Bible just wasn't accessible to what we would call the common people. And this was an interesting time in history because there was now the ability to mass print essentially and so this was a great endeavor to be able to get the bible translated from the original language hebrew and aramaic for the old testament and greek from the manuscripts and have a word for word translation in english and Look, there's two schools of thought as far as what type of translation is best for those that read the Bible. There's what's called the word-for-word -word translation, which is what the King James Version is. And then there's also a thought-for-thought -thought translation, which essentially is translating more or less the concept of what the writer is conveying in the right language of the translation. And so some of the dispute is that, well, if it's not word for word, if it's thought for thought, then there may be an interpretive layer that's inserted by the translator. I don't know how valid that belief is, but that's one of the camps right there that, that divide KJV only people from everybody else is this was what was what is still considered today one of the most accurate word for word translations ever done in terms of translating the Bible into English. But with that said, this controversy has gotten pretty crazy. Like I actually had a relative who was so passionate about King James only being the only authorized version. He sent me a book by a KJV only apologist to try to defend why the KJV translation was the only translation that Christians should read and they should be skeptical of any other translation. And now this first argument bothered me because it made it seem like, well, what? What about other languages, first of all? What about Spanish speakers? Can they not read the Spanish version of the Bible? Or what about French speakers or translating the Bible in Chinese as the gospel is spreading in China? And, you know, so I had this little debate with my uncle and he was like, well, of course it could be in the languages, but they're going to be just as true to the word for word translation is the KJV. There's an equivalent of that in the other languages. And so again, we're just kind of like, mm, all right, well, I'm not sure that I'm, I'm swallowing what you're trying to sell here. But let's get into this a little bit. There's a, a really cool website that I found by the Gospel Coalition that summarizes the King James only controversy. And I'm not going to read this article completely. I'm going to scroll down because I've dealt with this directly a couple of times and if any of you guys ever come across this then I just thought I'd post something to help you a little bit to understand what is this about. So 
One of the arguments is that the King James Version is based on the majority text over and against the modern versions that are based on the corrupt Alexandrian text. And I guess this additional argument from KJV only loyalists is that some of the Greek manuscripts that were found were found in Alexandria, Egypt. And I guess there's something evil about Egypt, according to these purists. And they feel like the Byzantine manuscripts from Greek would be more authentic than whatever was copied and found in Alexandria from those Greek manuscripts. I don't really know, but I think it's kind of silly. And then another one is that uh, you may find some translations that might be skipping the word Lord or Christ, and that's trying to strip the deity of, of Christ and diluting his lordship. And I, I don't know, I just struggle to see like why people would be so passionate about it. One of my problems with, with this logic is they're almost saying that like the enemy is having his way with every other translation and God was the only one that authorized one version and one version only of the Bible. Well, first of all, the Old Testament is not in English. It's in Hebrew and Aramaic. So if you really want to be pure about reading the Old Testament, then you should learn Hebrew and Aramaic and find the original language in that context and similarly greek for the new testament so they're they're already kind of to me losing some ground in attempting to claim accuracy with respect to what we should be reading but even then like i look at it in the sense of hey you know what we're we're christians we're called to fix our eyes on christ and his name is above every name and so to want to try to think that the enemy is having his way over God's will for the Bible, to me, that seems very defeatist. I think that that's actually more of a sin to try to cling to a belief system that the enemy is diluting and corrupting certain translations of the Bible, and that's going to, by extension, affect someone's spiritual growth as they get into the Bible. I think that that's speaking curses into someone's attempt to just get into the Word. And I look at it this way. I would rather have Christians, whether new or seasoned Christians, read the Bible, period. Pick a version that you find is comfortable for you to get into and just be disciplined about reading it. To me, someone reading the Bible, any version of the Bible, is better than people that don't pick up their Bible at all. So that's a more passionate argument I would rather get into than trying to have this intramural debate on whether or not the word for word translation or a thought for thought translation is gonna build us up better spiritually. If there's passion about it, okay, fine. But to the point to where we've got like a whole like different camp of Christians that just want to sternly defend the, the KJV, I, I don't know, I just don't get it. You know, and some of these, reasons get real silly, like number three, right? That heretics and other groups of people that are, you know, we would say sinners, I mean, homosexuals, come on now. Or in the translation committees, this is just, again, like finding silly ways to divide the church. I would say, look in the mirror first, take the log out of your own eye before you take the splitter out of somebody else's eye. How do you know these people that were on the committee were this, that, or the other. Like, that's just messed up. Modern translations, the lead verses from the Bible. Okay, so this one I kind of wanted to get into for a second because I wanted to illustrate a couple of things about this one. So let's take a look at versions of the Bible. And you know what's really cool about finding resources online, like BibleGateway.com, first of all, let me recommend this if you've never checked it out. Bible Gateway is basically an online access to the Bible in tons of different translations and what's really cool about bible gateway is you can actually use this little button right here to bring up parallel versions and look at them and compare them simultaneously so like in this example i've got the king james version and notice it says authorized right it's because there's also been the the new king james version king james 21st century so it's it's had a couple of of 
different renditions since the original 1611 version, right? So the authorized one is referring to the 1611 translation. And then American Standard Version, and then here's another example of the NRSV. And I just picked uh, Philippians 2 as an example just to show like, hey, there's really not much difference. So let's just read the first verse here. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. And then if I go to, let's say, the American Standard Version, if there is therefore any exhortation in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any tender mercies and compassions, make full my joy that ye be of the same mind, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. And then the NRSV is what we would call very much like a modern day style of how we have English today. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of, of one mind. I don't know, those all say the same thing to me. And if you just randomly pick chapter and verses, you pretty much see that there's not really like any difference at all between these versions. But I wanted to get back to that argument of versions omitting certain passages from text because there is one that is pretty commonly used and i'll illustrate it here so in acts 28 in acts 8 right there's the section where philip uh, comes across the ethiopian and he baptizes the eunuch and i'm not going to read this whole thing for time's sake but basically philip encounters the ethiopian and the ethiopian is so excited he wants to get baptized and there is a difference in what happens here. So I'll just kind of scroll down for a second and get to the critical piece here. It's between verses 36 through 38. So in the KJV, I'll start at 36. And as they went on their way, they came onto a certain water and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now, verse 37, which I think is a pretty neat response by the eunuch, accepting Jesus Christ is who he says he is, the Son of God, and then he's baptized. And this is a, a very strong belief by a lot of evangelical Christians that to be saved, not only are you baptized, but you also need to accept Jesus as your Lord, Savior, and the Son of God. And that this is missing, if you notice, so the other comparatives I have here is the NRSV, and I also have the ESV here. And in these examples, notice there is no verse 37. It goes from 36 to 38, 36 to 38. And I'm not exactly sure exactly why verse 37 was skipped. Uh, it's, it's definitely in some other translations for sure, besides the KJV. Like another really good one that I like for studying is what I would call the Amplified Version. The Amplified Version adds an even further emphasis for studying. And it's a really cool version. It just adds additional like, uh, detailed references that you'll find in brackets, which means they're not part of the translation, but they are adding additional emphasis to the context of what's going on. And the Amplified Version, as an example, you see does maintain verse 37. See, there it is. And it leaves it in brackets. So I think right here it says, early manuscripts do not contain this verse. So I think that's part of why it is, is some manuscripts didn't contain verse 37. So even then, that may be some sort of scholarly debate on whether or not uh, that verse 37 was inserted in subsequent manuscripts or not. I don't really know. I'm not a scholar. But what I can tell you is that even when there is some slight nuances to translations that might be skipping a verse, well, if we're going to get into the Bible, then let's be passionate about comparing different versions. Like, that's cool to do. I enjoy looking at other versions. I have more than one 
in my house. I have a King James Version. I also have the English Standard Version and I have the American Standard Version. And so like I would encourage you to have multiple versions. And with the internet, you can pull up other versions and compare versus in parallel like I just demonstrated right here. So it's, a, it's an exercise I would encourage you to do. <clears throat> in this context, I just don't really see that that's a strong enough case though to be a KJV only purist. Because what, verse 37 is missing, so now like I'm gonna not be as built up in the spirit as somebody who did read that? Mm, I don't know that I can buy that. I just really can't get there. Again, I'm gonna stick with a unifying message, which is as Christians, we should read the Bible and read a version that's comfortable with you. The King James Version, the 1611 version is using an antiquated form of English that we don't really use today. And so it's, it's tough to read. And if that's gonna discourage people from reading and they're gonna put down their Bible, then I'm sorry, I, I would rather somebody pick up their Bible, be encouraged to pick up their Bible than try to make somebody pick up a version just because you think it's the authorized version. No, I'm just not, not with that. But anyway, I'm gonna uh, post these links in the details. This is the summary of the King James Version, like it's, it's history on kingjamesbibleonline.org. And then on the Gospel Coalition, it talks about the King James Only controversy. Like I mentioned, it's got several reasons why these people believe what they believe. And then it even has some encouraging ways. There was another article I found on ways to graciously engage a KJV only enthusiast and maybe try to understand it because maybe some people are down with defending the KJV and maybe because they just heard it from other people maybe they their church practices this shamefully and they might just be drinking the Kool-Aid and don't even understand what's going on so I would encourage this kind of step one right here listen understand see why they defend it and it just seems like they're using some what sounds like talking points to you then start with the same thing I would encourage, which is, wouldn't you rather have somebody read the Bible than be discouraged by the antiquity of the English language and not pick it up at all? And see what they have to say about that. All right, gang. That's what I wanted to say about this KJV controversy. Again, I'll have the links down below for, the, for those of you that want to check out more info. That's all for this episode. God bless you guys.